With MRE, we had the opportunity to evaluate patients looking for fibrosis, and it gave us uh, two answers that we don't routinely get in, in clinic. The first is, is that there are patients with relatively um, normal liver enzymes, or at least somewhat elevated uh, enzymes, who haven't had any symptoms from their disease. It's always difficult to perform a liver biopsy in those people to determine if they have advanced disease or not. Uh, the, the test is invasive. Patients may be reluctant to undergo that procedure. With MRE, we're able to identify in those patients whether they have significant disease or not. So those patients are getting some sort of assessment about whether they have liver fibrosis or not, whereas in the past they may not have had any assessment at all because it was either biopsy or no biopsy. Uh, the second group of patients are those who turn out to have features suggestive of cirrhosis that we can't detect from routine testing. And again, when we can identify cirrhosis based on what uh, values look like on the uh, MRE exam, uh, we can avoid biopsy in that group of patients because we get our answers using this test uh, and it spares them a, a costly and invasive procedure. Uh, then the third group of patients is where this test really is important. It gives us an an idea as to whether or not patients may have an intermediate degree of suspicion for, for fibrosis. So if it's not looking normal or you know, severely abnormal, that intermediate group of patients um, gets an assessment as to whether they have fibrosis or not, and that's probably the group you want to target the use of liver biopsy in to get an exact sense of how much fibrosis there may or may not be. So the, you know, the technology was developed here at Mayo, uh, and uh, Dr. Richard Eamon and his group in the uh, MR laboratory uh, came up with the, the concept and then eventually uh, developed the, um, the hardware and the, and the software uh, to uh, perform this test and, and process the data, uh, which uh, we've now been able to use in clinical practice. The uh, image that's produced that allows us to measure how stiff or soft the liver is um, is called an elastogram, and it's essentially a, a color-coded map of a cross-section of liver that we get from an MRI uh, scan, and it, uh, the color codes are corresponding to uh, varying degrees of stiffness within the liver. There's um, a lot of pieces of data out there which suggest that the incidence and the prevalence of, of liver disease is increasing over time. Uh, the two major diseases are chronic hepatitis C and something we call non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Uh, hepatitis C has been known uh, to be around for some time <clears throat> and actually because it takes several years if not decades for people to develop symptoms of liver disease where they present to physicians, we're starting to see many of those people now coming in uh, to our clinic with symptoms or evidence for advanced liver disease. Uh, these are people who were probably infected 15 to 20 years ago, uh, but they're now, now turning up. Uh, what that means for us is that these are patients who have now developed advanced fibrosis or cirrhosis. Uh, these are people that may or may not uh, need liver transplant. Uh, and then there's a group of people in that cohort which are uh, now being identified with earlier stages of fibrosis who might benefit from some of the advances in, in therapy. The second group, which um, is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is primarily uh, as a result of increasing trends in the uh, in incidence and prevalence of both obesity as well as diabetes mellitus. And those are thought to be two of the major risk factors of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Uh, when you compare the two, uh, the most common disease is actually non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Um, but but both, both that and hepatitis C account for the majority of, of liver disease that we see. I think the takeaway message is um, that with this uh, novel technology and its study in gr various groups of patients to determine how accurate it is in assessing whether there's advanced fibrosis versus lesser degrees of fibrosis, uh, we've been able to show that uh, magnetic resonance elastography uh, is highly accurate in detecting uh, moderate to severe fibrosis in the liver of patients with chronic liver disease and that um, the uh, variety of patients we see and the variety of liver disease that we see, um, this test seems to be able to perform in all those different settings and that there are, uh, there's no specific group of patients or type of liver disease uh, that uh, would benefit from this test. We, we feel that um, uh, 
any type of patient with, with chronic liver disease uh, where there's a question of whether or not there's advanced fibrosis or not um, should be able to benefit from this uh, technology.